So today I'm making another quick video about Imba. Today's video is all about how to integrate Imba with NPM modules and just the larger JavaScript ecosystem. Very easy to do in Imba. If you don't know Imba, I recommend you check out the Imba.io website or some of the other videos on my channel about Imba. Imba is a web programming language that compiles to JavaScript. And for me, it's replaced HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. So let's take an example of an NPM module. This one is a cool project that will generate confetti, makes it really easy to shoot confetti out of your cursor. And so I just look at the documentation on GitHub, find the name of the module, I'll do NPM install to install it, and copy the way that it's imported here with this require statement. I'll just copy that into Imba. And the Imba syntax for this is pretty much exactly the same. I'm just gonna remove the semicolon. And then I've got a click handler here on this button tag that calls the confetti function, which is what the documentation says. You call the confetti function, it shoots the confetti. By default, it shoots it out of the center of the screen. So click the button, there's the confetti, it works. Now there's some other configuration options that you can use with this function. So I'm gonna change this um, from just directly calling the confetti function to calling a handle click function, which I'll put up here. And I'll write in some of those configuration options. So you pass an object, and one of the options is start velocity. So I'll put that in. It shoots out a little bit slower. I'll try it even slower just so we can see. So integrating with this module with JavaScript objects and arrays for these configuration options, here you can set the uh, colors of the confetti that you wanna use. It, it works pretty straightforward. You know, syntax in Imba is a little bit different, but for these basic things, it's almost exactly the same. And it's all, almost always pretty easy to imagine what the Imba equivalent for some JavaScript code is. Because remember, the Imba code is just being compiled to JavaScript. So arrays in Imba are just exactly JavaScript arrays and function calls are turned into JavaScript function calls. So it's all very close. Just think of Imba as JavaScript with a slightly different syntax. Now, another NPM module that I found myself using recently is NanoID. So you can look at the documentation here. I'll install the module, NPM install NanoID and then just copy and paste what it says to do to import it, import nano ID from nano ID. And then here, I'm just gonna loop through 100 times printing out the result of a call to this nano ID function. Obviously, this is used for providing stable, unique IDs to objects in your app, but I'm just printing out a bunch of them. And you can see here, it, it, every time it re-renders this tag, uh, you get a new list, just to show that it works, not really how you would actually use this module. And the next example I want to show is how you can integrate with JavaScript or TypeScript files that you want to use in your project. So I actually like to write a lot of my code in TypeScript, even though I'm using Imba for my views. Um, and so here's a TypeScript file that I wrote for another project that formats milliseconds as a string. And so I'm just going to copy and paste this function into a file in my project. So I create format.ts, paste it in there, make sure it's exported. And then I'll go into my Imba file here, and I'm just going to say import the name of that function formatted duration in milliseconds from dot slash format. So the path to that file. And now I can use that imported function here. So I'm just going to call it formatted duration in milliseconds. And you'll notice that um, the VS code tooling for Imba is smart enough to get all the information from that file. So you can see that it's giving me like the function signature and the types that are expected. So it's really nice. It integrates really well with TypeScript. And I'll just put in some number here to this format function. And we can see in the browser that it's changed this number of milliseconds into a formatted string. Now let's have a little bit more fun with this. I'm gonna set a millisecond MS property on this tag and I'll set it to date.now. So this will be when this tag is first initialized, um, it'll store the current date. And then down here, I'm gonna take the current date for each time this tag is rendered and subtract, that, uh, subtract off the initial milliseconds from when the tag was mounted. And then if we set auto render, that's gonna make this tag uh, render every 30 or 30 times per second. And we can see this number change each time the tag renders. So we get like a counting up. That auto render prop is a special Imba property that will auto automatically re-render the tag at the interval that you tell it to. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add this def render here so that I have room to type in some more code above my um, HTML template. And what I'm gonna do is store the elapsed time. Um, so same thing, subtracting off the milliseconds that, from when this tag was initially created to now. And then I'll just check if more than three seconds has elapsed. And if so, I'll call that confetti function. So now we have a little count up and when it reaches three seconds, the confetti fires. 
Cool, so hopefully you can see that it's very easy, straightforward to integrate with NPM modules. There's nothing special about it. You don't have to worry about finding special IMBA modules or anything like that. The whole NPM ecosystem works as you'd expect, and it works with your own TypeScript or JavaScript files in the same way. But if you're ever unclear about the IMBA code that you're typing and what the resulting JavaScript code is when that IMBA code is compiled behind the scenes, you can use the imba c command. So generally this isn't necessary because the imba code, it's pretty easy to imagine what the equivalent JavaScript is, but if you ever wanna see it, you can just come into a file, like I've created a file here called test.imba, and I'm writing a little bit of imba code, and then I'll go into my terminal and use npx to run npx imba c, which is imba compile, and then the name of the imba file. That'll output a JavaScript file with the same name, and I can go look at that and I'll see what the JavaScript output for a given IMBA file is. So in this case, it's quite close to the code that I typed in IMBA, but here's a line of code, which is um, the definition of a function that's got a bit more of an IMBA syntax, right? This doesn't quite look like JavaScript code. Um, it's all on one line, it's got do in it, it's got an implicit return, and it's got the string interpolation that IMBA uses. So let's see what the output of that is after we run it through IMBA C. And we can see that the uh, it's turned into a pretty standard JavaScript function. The console.log is actually returned because Imba has those implicit returns for the last line of the function. And we can see that my interpolation, uh, string interpolation has been, has been turned into string concatenation. So again, if you're ever unclear about what a given Imba code is gonna turn into in JavaScript, it's usually pretty clear, but you can use the Imba C command to take a look at it for yourself. Do you wanna see more videos about Imba? Let me know in the comments what topics are bugging you or that you'd like to learn more about or see examples of, and I'll be happy to make those.